This is Tongli, aka the Venice of the East. With over a thousand years of history, Tongli is considered by many to be one of the top three water towns in China. This ancient masterpiece, an enchanting labyrinth of waterways and alleys, bears witness to its vibrant past as a dynamic center of transportation and commerce. Today, as time so ever gracefully passes, Tongli grows even more captivating, maturing like a fine wine. As the shrubbery upon its bridges continues to flourish, as the wood upon its boat slowly peels and fades away, as its architectural facade embraces a darker and richer hue, the aroma of its past only deepens, beckoning you to come savor the extraordinary essence of ancient China. Hi, I'm Noah. Join me as I embark on exciting adventures discovering China's hidden gems and completing thrilling travel challenges along the way. And now, it's challenge time. Throughout this video, engage viewers by asking entertaining trivia questions about this place in China. Feel free to skip ahead to my Tongli trivia challenge if you dare. But first, let me introduce you to the amazing Tongli water town. As some of you might know, I've compiled a list of China's most amazing ancient towns, and I'm on a mission to explore them all. Tongli is ranked pretty high at number 7. But actually, this is a very real, very down-to-earth, very authentically charming little town. All you have to do is to take a moment to admire the architecture. Row upon row of white walls adorned with black tiles and those classic Chinese upturned eaves, as if they stood there untouched for generations, housing the memories of grandfathers and great-grandfathers gone by. Wander into a local craft store, and you're not just window shopping for a fashion design piece that was crafted yesterday. For these are artifacts of the past that have acquired a wear and tear, a layer of dirt that in my eyes makes them more valuable than any fancy designer bag money could buy. However, the experience that has really whisked me away to the past is enjoying a hot brew here at the tea house of the South Garden. What a better way to warm myself on this cold, rainy winter morning than with a warm cup of tea in this cultural hotspot dating back to the 19th century during the glorious Qing Dynasty. Normally, rain isn't my cup of tea, but today I say, let it pour. Roommates, butter up your popcorn, buckle up your seatbelt, because it's time for the great Tong Lee Trivia Challenge. Let's first welcome our contestants. We have my mother, the lovely Maureen Darby Hamrock. Say hello. Yeah, hi. All right. And then we have... What's her name? What can you tell me, Shama? Uh, I'm Liu. I'm Liu. 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 Oh, okay. The wonderful Liu. He seems really nice, really awesome. I just met him five minutes ago. But, uh, nice guy, nice guy. And roommates, remember that this is first of and foremost for you. So, and I invite you down in the comments below to share your commentary on these questions, this challenge, and this video. All right, so, yeah, let's get started. The first question, how many canals run through Tongli? A, 10. B 11, C 15, D 27. 我觉得不会超过, 如果说按横平数值来说的话, 不会超过十条, 我觉得是十条. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Mom, well, yeah, which one do you choose? <laughs> B. Okay, the correct answer is C. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 15 canals divide Tongli into seven different inlets, not only adding to the town's aesthetic appeal, but for hundreds of years have played a critical role in the transportation of goods and people in this region of China. The second one. Another notable feature of Tongli is its stone bridges. How many stone bridges are in Tongli? A is 49, B is 56, C is 76, D is 103. I go speed 76. 
C76. So the correct answer is A, 49 stone bridges. What makes the bridges of Tongli truly magnificent is not only that they serve as a picturesque backdrop to this natural photo studio, but each one of them encompasses a special meaning or holds a unique allegory. The most renowned of them all are the three bridges, each one of them like its own beautiful temple. The act of crossing each one brings all the blessing and fortunes of a sacred prayer. The Taiping Bridge is the bridge of harmony. Countless souls before me have crossed its path in pursuit of a life filled with peace and serenity. Next, set foot upon the Changqing Bridge, the bridge of longevity. Let it guide you to a long life abundant with favorable blessings. Finally, we come to the Jili Bridge, the bridge of luck. Traverse its expanse to ensure you manifest the greatest fortune and positive outcomes throughout your years. However, amidst the enchanting tales of Tongli's bridges, one fable stands out, and that's the tale of Fu Guan Bridge. Once upon a time, there was a fish. Let's call him Flippy. Flippy had a dream of one day shedding his tiny scales and tail to transform himself into the fiercest dragon in the land. For if Flippy were able to vault over the dragon gate, he would be able to shape shift into a dragon. So one day, right a major wave, Flippy took his shot. He jumped, he jumped for his life, and it looked like he might just about make it. That is, until he caught gaze of a beautiful woman. Her captivating beauty so entrancing that Flippy lost his concentration, was unable to clear the gate. His body turned to stone and was forever engraved on the Fu Guan Bridge. Within Tongli's bridges, a tapestry of stories unfolds. The passing of time has bestowed upon them a rich repository of memories, where each crack, each weathered mark, holds a secret waiting to be unraveled. Next question. Okay, which of the following is true about the Tuesa Garden in Tongli Water Town? A. The Tuesa Garden is the oldest garden in eastern China. B. A garden in New York was built modeled after this garden. C. The Tuesa Garden is the only Chinese style garden in China designed by a Western architect. D. The Tuesa Garden was originally built as a temple. I'm gonna go with B just because I haven't picked the letter D before. D. Okay. D. Okay, both of you chose D. The answer is B. A garden in New York no, no, was no, no. built <laughs> modeled after Teresa Garden. The Teresa Garden, otherwise known as the Retreat and Reflection Garden, is a must visit in Tongli Water Town. There's something special about gardens in this part of the world. Each element, big or small, placed thoughtfully with an intended purpose in mind, creating one big immersive art exhibit. In particular, the Tuesa Garden was built with the Taoist ideology of yin and yang in mind, for opposing forces to coexist together in harmony. One example of this harmony can be observed in the garden's seemingly magical floating effect. A central pond filled high with water, surrounded by buildings on all sides, results in an ethereal illusion, where from certain angles the garden's edifices appear as if they're suspended on water. The floating effect is just one of many features which contribute to the retreat and reflection garden's main theme which as its name suggests is the creation of a serene environment for contemplation, self-introspection, and the appreciation of nature. It was built by Ming Dynasty official Ren Lang Sheng, who after being dismissed from his post, returned to his hometown Tongli to live out his days in self-reflection surrounded by nature. That ain't a bad fate if I do say so myself. Next question. Tongli has several famous nicknames. Of course, the Venice of the East is perhaps the most prominent. Which of the following is another well-known nickname for Tongli? A is a natural photo studio, B the floating jewel, C a living painting, and D the timeless oasis. Uh, Nishan. A. A. Okay, he chooses A. I choose B. Mom chooses B. Okay. 
the correct answer is A, a natural photo studio. Tongli is known as a natural photo studio due to its scenic waterways, charming bridges, traditional architecture, and overall stunningly captivating qualities that make it an ideal location for capturing beautiful photographs. Okay, here's what I think this is with my zero for four score is I need to come to China. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, there you go. Thank you so much, Mom and, uh, and Leo, for participating. Uh, uh, <laughs> congratulations, congratulations. We've just about explored Tongli inside and out. There's just one more thing that every traveler must do before setting sail from Tongli Watertown. When most people think about trade in China, they think about the infamous Silk Road. But I think some people forget just how important rivers and canals have been to China's development. During the Ming and Qing dynasty, Tongli played a pivotal role in trade and commerce in the Yangtze River region of China. I can only imagine the bustling trade markets that must have existed here, selling rice, salts, ceramics, and silks. It must have been an entirely different world back then. So at the beginning of this video, I introduced Tongli as the Venice of the East. And truth be told, I've never been to Venice myself. I'm sure it's beautiful. I'm sure I'd have a blast if I went there. But I think it's unfortunate that Tongli is promoted by a comparison to another place. I mean, Venice and Tongli are wildly different. Speaking specifically to those of you who uh, grew up in the West, I promise you that compared to going to Venice, coming to Tongli Ancient Town will wildly expand your worldview, your knowledge of cultures, and open up your mind much more than it would a trip to Venice. I mean, if you're a person who only listens to Justin Bieber and Taylor Swift, if your definition of a garden is one that will fit inside your backyard, and if the only Chinese food you've had in your life is the orange chicken from Panda Express. I'm telling you, come to Tongli. It's beautiful, it's down to earth, it's authentically charming, and you won't regret it. With that, I bid you, see you for our next great China adventure.